My name's Chris Pebbity and I'm a Darwin-based professional snake catcher. Often I get asked what you can do to prevent snake bite. There are three main things. One, don't touch or handle snakes. Two, use a torch when moving around at night. And three, wear protective clothing. Boots, long pants, long sleeves and gloves when working in a garden or areas that are likely to be occupied by snakes will reduce the likelihood of a snake bite. If you're unlucky enough to be bit by a snake, it is vitally important that you have first aid equipment and first aid training. Having the correct bandages and the correct equipment means that you can delay the effects of venom and having the training to apply those things correctly is just as important. Professor Curry is now going to take you through the important parts of snake bite first aid. So here we have Tash providing a first aid for this snake bite victim, making sure that she remains completely immobile. Here she's placing gauze, if it is available, over the bite site and then she's beginning bandaging with a 15 centimetre stretchy bandage called an ace bandage and the bandaging is beginning over the bite site. Crepe bandages are just way too flimsy and the pressure underneath them disappears very rapidly and therefore the bandages that need to be recommended are stretchy bandages and bandages which are broader than previously recommended so 15 centimeters for the lower limb is ideal and stretchy bandages that can generate and maintain adequate pressure. Now she's bandaging from the toes up to the thigh with the stretchy bandage and now she's placing a mark with a pen over the site of the bite for the clinic and hospital staff to know where the bite site occurred. Now she's going to splint the limb and this is critical to maintain immobilization and she is using a flexi splint called a SAM splint which is a widely available splint in commercial first aid kits and ideal for snake bite. The splint is placed neatly underneath the limb and then with further bandages is fastened to the limb so that the immobilization is now complete. And finally, she is now once again reassuring the patient while she is organizing for the patient to be safely transported while immobile to a health facility.